Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gobind Rai Garg. In this video, we will talk about new drugs. Now, one important thing, there are plenty, plenty of new drugs, but I have selected very few for you so that it is not a burden on you. Now, even if you find that these are also difficult to remember, I will advise you to skip them. Okay, so concentrate on more important topics. If you have completed them, then you can come to these new drugs. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. It is Jave Gpent and Ubro Gpent. So if you see the name of these drugs end with the Gpent. So Gpent stands for Calcitonin Gene Related Peptide Antagonist. So the name says these are gene, GE means gene. P means peptide, A and T means antagonist. So these are gene peptide antagonist. Which gene peptide antagonist? Calcitonin gene related peptide antagonist. And we all know CGRP is overactive in a disease called migraine. So these are the drugs which are used for acute attack of migraine. So they are used in acute attack of migraine. And important thing, they can be given orally. So they are the new oral drugs for treatment of acute attack of migraine. Okay, then moving to next drug, it is tirjepetite. Now, if you know, we have two important incretins in the body. One is GLP-1 and second is GIP. Now, both of these, they decrease the gastrointestinal motility, particularly gastric motility is reduced as well as they uh, basically activate this uh, inhibitory center in the brain, which decrease the appetite. Satiety center is activated basically. So, this is a drug which is a dual agonist of both of them. It stimulates GLP-1 as well as GIP. So when both are stimulated, that will decrease the appetite and these... Uh, both action will lead to weight loss. So they are approved in obesity. So tirzepatide is a new drug which is approved in obesity. Remember the other drugs which we discussed earlier in our endocrine system, GLP-1 analogs like axinatide, liraglutide, semaglutide, they act on GLP-1 only. Whereas tirzepatide act on both. So it is a dual agonist of GLP-1 as well as GIP. Okay. Then we have a drug called Riza fungin. So from the name you can identify, we have another antifungal drug, similar name is Caspofungin. So Riza fungin, Caspofungin, they are similar drugs, fungin, fungin. So like Caspofungin, Riza fungin is also an echinocandin. It is an echinocandin. So the name says it is used for fungal infections. It's a new drug for fungal infections. So like a caspofungin, it is also indicated in candidiasis and aspergillosis. So it's a new drug which is used in candida and aspergillosis. Okay. Then we have another new drug called as retifenilimab. Retifenilimab is a new immune checkpoint inhibitor. Immune checkpoint inhibitor. So what do we mean by immune checkpoint? We know that this is a T cell. Normally the function of T cell is to kill the cancer cells but not to kill a normal cell. So how T cell kills a cancer cell but not a normal cell? The reason is the normal cells they have an ID card and that ID card is called as programmed death receptors programmed death receptors are present on the normal cells and T cells they interact with these receptors. So they have ligand for the programmed death receptors. So when they interact the T cells are inhibited. So when T cells are inhibited so that will stop the activation of T cell. Normal cell cannot be killed. But cancer cells do not have this. So when the cancer cells do not have this, that will result in killing of the cancer cells because they cannot inhibit T cell. Now, many cancer cells also start expressing these. So they start expressing PD-1. So when they start expressing programmed death receptors or ligands, so that will lead to inhibition of T cells. So the cancer cells keep on growing. So what we have done, we have done uh, made a monoclonal antibody against these programmed death ligands. 
So when monoclonal antibody is produced, now T cell cannot be inhibited and that will kill the cancer cell. Okay, so that is the strategy. Retri friendly map. This is approved for Merkel cell carcinoma. It is the latest immune checkpoint inhibitor which is approved in Merkel cell carcinoma. Okay, moving to next new drug, it is Parsentan. So from the name, what you can find, its name is ending with ant n. So ant n means endo thylin antagonist so number one it is endothelin receptor antagonist endothelin receptor antagonist number two it is ar 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 means it is also angiotensin receptor antagonist so it has two properties so it is a dual antagonist one at endothelin receptors second is at angiotensin receptors so by blocking these two receptors it is useful in treatment of iga nephropathy iga nephropathy it is aggravated by vasoconstriction so by blocking endothelin receptors which are very potent vasoconstrictors and by blocking angiotensin receptor which is again a vasoconstrictor it result in vasodilation which help in relieving the symptoms of iga nephropathy okay so this is a new drug for iga nephropathy next drug is deprodustat now before going to this drug we'll try to understand one thing whenever hypoxia occurs in the body there is less oxygen hypoxia so when hypoxia is there we want more oxygen carrying capacity so what we want we want hemoglobin so how hemoglobin is synthesized hypoxia will lead to production of a compound called as hypoxia inducible factor now this hypoxia inducible factor it will go to kidney and start producing erythropoietin so when erythropoietin is produced that will increase the number of rbs so oxygen carrying capacity increases okay so this is the normal thing but normally hif hypoxia inducible factor it is normally inhibited by an enzyme it is metabolized or we can say inactivated by an enzyme called as hypoxia inducible factor proline hydroxylase proline hydroxylase is usually written as pod proline hydroxylase so hypoxia inducible factor proline hydroxylase is the enzyme which will inhibit hif so when this is inhibitor erythropoietin will not be produced so this is a normal physiological thing so what we have done is we have done developed a drug or an enzyme inhibitor which inhibit this enzyme so if we inhibit this enzyme hif proline hydroxylase so what will happen HIF cannot be inhibited. So the level of HIF increases. So when this increases, the erythropoietin increases, that will increase the RBC production. So this drug is approved for treatment of anemia due to chronic kidney disease. Anemia due to chronic kidney disease, we can use Deprodu stat. But important thing is it is approved only on patients which are on dialysis. It is approved for patient who are on dialysis instead of giving erythropoietin obviously we can give erythropoietin instead of giving erythropoietin we can give daprodustat the advantage of this is it can be given orally whereas erythropoietin is injectable it is given by subcutaneous route okay now daprodustat from the name you can remember it is proline hydroxylase inhibitor proline hydroxylase static so inhibit the metabolism of hif and the name says or means it is given orally it is given orally and it is used in anemia due to chronic kidney disease okay next drug is elacistrant elacistrant is a sister of an old drug which was full westrand if you remember the name full westrand so like full westrand the name is ending with estrand and the estrand says it is estrogen antagonist it stop the action of estrogen just like full westrand estrogen antagonist so these are not actually estrogen antagonists these are called selective estrogen receptor down regulators 
so both of them are scrd selective estrogen receptor down regulators they decrease the number of estrogen receptors and they are used in treatment of breast cancer they are used in treatment of breast cancer now what is special full vestrant is an injectable drug whereas elasistrant is a new drug which can be given orally for breast cancer it's a new drug which is oral drug for breast cancer okay so obviously it will be indicated in estrogen receptor positive breast cancer so because it is inhibiting the action of estrogen okay next is baxa glyphosin so this is a same drug similar to all other glyphosins we know glyphosins glyphosins how to remember that just write urine at the end so what they are doing they are saying that glucose flows in urine so these act by causing the flow of glucose in the urine so they result in glucose urea glucose urea all glyphosins like canagliflozin dapagliflozin a new drug is baxagliflozin they are sglt2 inhibitors so this is also sglt2 inhibitor and they are indicated in type 2 diabetes mellitus indicated in type 2 diabetes mellitus okay now next drug that is lena capavir so lena capavir one thing you can remember from the name vir means this is a drug for the virus drug against virus and which virus it is for hiv human immunodeficiency virus so what it do is it inhibit the capsid capsid inhibitor in the hiv so this capsid inhibitor basically normally hiv has to enter in the nucleus of the human cells in the cd4 cells only then it can work so by inhibiting the capsid hiv is not able to enter the nucleus of the cd4 cells when it is not able to enter then further processes cannot occur now what is special about this drug this is an injectable drug but very important thing is it is very long acting so it need to be given once in 6 months so it's a very long acting injection indicated once in 6 months only okay so that is about lena capavir next drug is teplizumab teplizumab is a monoclonal antibody it's a monoclonal antibody against cd3 monoclonal antibody against cd3 t means 3 it's a monoclonal antibody against 3 cd3 so what it does it inhibit the metabolism of insulin normally in type 1 diabetes what happens in type 1 diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes mellitus there is a destruction of beta cells destruction of beta cells occur so that insulin cannot be produced so by blocking the monoclonal antibody cd3 it inhibit the breakdown of beta cells so when beta cell is not broken down insulin will not be metabolized okay now in type 1 diabetes mellitus there are three stages stage 1 stage 2 and stage 3 so in stage 1 there is destruction of beta cell starts but clinically it do not manifest insulin levels are still normal then in stage 2 insulin level start decreasing but still some amount of insulin is there and in stage 3 there is no insulin at all total destruction of beta cells occur frank diabetes occur so the main function is that teplizumab prevent the conversion of stage 2 to stage 3 it do not allow the complete destruction of pancreatic beta cells so this is a new drug teplizumab for iddm okay the next drug is again easy aflapag grastim so the name says it is granulocyte stimulator so it is nothing but gcsf so just like filgrastim peg filgrastim it is also a grastim so it is indicated in yes leukopenia leukopenia due to bone marrow suppression so whenever there is leukopenia we can use this new drug just like filgrastim okay next drug is vonoprazan vonoprazan is a drug known as k cap k cap means it is a potassium competitive acid blocker 
पोटाशियम कॉम्पिटेटिव एसिड ब्लॉकर इन सिंपल लैंग्वेज दे इनिबिट दी प्रोटोन पंप सो प्रोटोन पंप इज प्रेजेंट विच हेल्प इन रिमूवल ऑफ प्रोटोन इन दूमेन इन एक्सचेंज विद पोटाशियम सो दिस इज वोनोप्राजान इज अ ड्रग विच कंपीट विद दिस पोटाशियम so when it compete with the potassium proton cannot be released into the lumen so it's it is not produced so it work like prazoles omeprazole pentoprazole which we normally say ppis so similar to that it has action but what is the difference the difference is this drug is much faster acting than omeprazole like drugs and more importantly it is a reversible inhibitor of this pump remember prazoles are irreversible inhibitor prazans are reversible inhibitor prazole is ppi whereas prazan is k cap potassium competitive acid block okay next drug is mavacamptan mavacamptan is cardiac myosin inhibitor is a cardiac myosin inhibitor and you can remember from the name it is antagonist of cardiac myosin antagonist of cardiac myosin and we know when we activate myosin there will be increase in contractility so by inhibiting this it will decrease contractility and in which disease we want to decrease contractility yes it is used in hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy so mavacamptan is a new drug for hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy normally you we use beta blockers beta blocker also decrease contractility but mavacamptan is a new drug okay next is levoketoconazole so it is nothing but the l isomer of ketoconazole and like ketoconazole it also inhibit the formation of corticosteroids remember ketoconazole inhibit the early steps in formation of corticosteroids so same is done by levo ketoconazole and where we want to decrease steroids yes in cushing syndrome cushing syndrome is due to excessive steroids so we can use levo ketoconazole for treatment of cushing syndrome what is the advantage over ketoconazole it is more potent than ketoconazole and it is less hepatotoxic than ketoconazole ketoconazole is more hepatotoxic levo ketoconazole is less hepatotoxic than ketoconazole next drug is incliciran incliciran any drug which end with the siran siran stand for small interfering rna small interfering rna any drug which end with siran they are nothing but rna inhibitors they are small interfering rna so in cliciran it interfere with the messenger rna of pcsk9 so basically it will inhibit the formation of pcsk9 and we know pcsk9 it result in ldl receptor metabolism PCSK9 help in metabolism of LDL receptors so that will result in decrease in LDL receptors this is the normal thing when we give incliciran PCSK9 will not work so that will lead to finally increase in LDL receptors and when LDL receptors increase they can take up the cholesterol from the blood so it is indicated in homozygous hypercholesterolemia homozygous hypercholesterolemia is treated by incliciran okay next drug is avacopan avacopan so what is avacopan it also the name says it is copan means complement complement an means antagonist it is a complement antagonist now which component of complement again the name says it is saying as 5a so it is complement 5a antagonist so v look like 5 in the roman and a so 5a antagonist complement 5a antagonist avacopan and it is indicated in anca associated vasculitis anca associated vasculitis is the use of avacopan from the name again you can say it is used for anca vasculitis 
एंका वास्कुलाइट इज द नेम से इज एवरी थिंग इट इज अ कॉम्प्लीमेंट एंटागोनिस्ट वी ए मीन्स फाइव ए एंटागोनिस्ट यूज फॉर एंका एसोसिएटेड वास्कुलाइट ओके द नेक्स्ट न्यू ड्रग इज इंपॉर्टेंट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर दैट इट इज एडुकैनुमैप एंड अनदर सिमिलर ड्रग इज लिकैनुमैप सो वट दीज ड्रग्स दे आर मोनोक्लोनल एंटीबॉडीज and they are used for nu or nu nu or ne is for neurons so they are monoclonal antibodies which work on neurons on which neurons these work they basically are monoclonal antibody against a beta amyloid a beta amyloid it is produced and deposits in the cholinergic neurons in the basal nucleus of maynard so it causes destruction of cholinergic neurons and that that result in a disease called as alzheimer's disease so these are the drugs which inhibit the a beta amyloid so the neuronal degeneration stop so basic underlying cause of alzheimer disease is treated so these are disease modifying drugs for alzheimer's disease remember the other drugs which are used in alzheimer disease which are drug of choice like donepezil rivastigmine and galantamin they cannot stop the uh, uh, neuron degeneration they are only for symptomatic relief they are drug of choice they are symptomatic relief they can be given orally but these are monoclonal antibodies and they can target the underlying cause okay so from the name you can remember the first drug aducanumab it is saying it is used for ad means alzheimer's disease and this is the drug which can treat the underlying cause because it is antagonist of a beta amyloid treat the underlying cause by blocking a beta amyloid okay so aducanumab and licanumab belong to this group next is semaglutide semaglutide you all know it is a glutide so like other glutides like liraglutide it is glp1 analog the glp1 analog and what is special to remember normally any drug which end with the diet it is peptide so it need to be given by injection but semaglutide has been made in the special preparations in spite of being a peptide this drug can be given orally so this is an oral drug semaglutide and it has been approved in treatment of obesity apart from diabetes where we are using all the glutides semaglutide is also used in obesity okay vivegrone so this is a drug which is similar to the drug we studied earlier it is mira background so mira background and vivegrone both of these are beta 3 agonist they stimulate the beta 3 receptors and beta 3 in the urinary bladder relax the bladder so these are indicated in over active bladder so these are beta 3 agonist they are used for treatment of over active bladder mera background we discussed it is saying that mera bladder gone mera bladder gone mera background and from the name also you can remember they are ending with b gron means they are acting on b means beta 3 beta 3 b 3 b gron b gron is beta 3 so mera bladder gone so these are Over, used in overactive bladder okay next drug is vericiguat vericiguat is a drug which is similar to another drug called as riosiguat so the drugs ending with c guat so guat says guanylate c means cyclase so these are soluble guanylate cyclase agonist these drug act by stimulating the guanylate cyclase enzyme So when guanylate cyclase enzyme is stimulated, that will increase the cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP is increased, and cyclic GMP will result in vasodilation. Now, riosiguat was the old drug, not an old, little older, and this is used in pulmonary hypertension. Whereas vericiguat is a new drug which is approved in congestive heart failure. as a vasodilator it is approved in chf okay so c guat is guanylate cyclase agonist next is remimazolam so from the name you can find it is a mixture or we can say properties of two drugs one is remifentanil remifentanil 
which is the shortest acting opioid with midazola midazola which is a benzodiazepine so it has property of both so like a benzodiazepine it is a cns depressant and like remifentanil it is very short acting so remimazolam is the shortest acting benzodiazepine now earlier midazolam was shortest acting but now it is even shorter acting than midazolam so it is the shortest acting benzodiazepine now now this is indicated to produce sedation benzodiazepines are used for sedation so we want to do some procedure we want to produce sedation so we can use remimazolam but for which procedures which can be completed in less than half an hour so only for those procedures which can be completed within 30 minutes we can use remimazolam to produce sedation okay now moving to avinacumab avinacumab is a monoclonal antibody and it is monoclonal antibody against a protein called as angiopoietin like 3 protein now what is the function of this protein normally this protein inhibit two enzymes one is lipoprotein lipase and second is endothelial lipase so normally this protein inhibit these two enzymes so avinacumab it inhibit the action of angiopoietin like protein when this is inhibited, that means lipoprotein lipase and endothelial lipase cannot be inhibited. On another word, we can say avinacumab result in stimulation of these two enzymes. And when these two enzymes are stimulated, that result in metabolism of lipids. So avinacumab decrease the serum lipids. It decrease LDL cholesterol. It decrease VLDL cholesterol as well as it decrease triglycerides these are good actions but it also decrease hdl cholesterol so it decrease all the cholesterols including the hdl cholesterol and it is indicated in treatment of homozygous hypercholesterolemia used for homozygous hypercholesterolemia okay next drug is braxanolone Braxanolone is a neurosteroid. It is a neurosteroid. The other name of this is allopregnenolone. Allopregnenolone. Now, Braxanolone act by stimulating the GABA A receptors. And the most important thing is to remember its use. It is used for postpartum depression it is used for treatment of postpartum depression braxanolone next is as a ketamine like ketamine it is nmda antagonist like ketamine it is nmda receptor antagonist what is special thing to remember it is used by the nasal root and it is indicated in treatment resistant depression so when the depression is not being treated by other antidepressant drugs we can use nasal s ketamine okay next drug is lana delumab lana delumab before going to this drug we'll try to understand there is a compound known as high molecular weight kininogen high molecular weight kininogen it is metabolized to form bradykinin and this is done by a compound in the body known as calicrine so calicrine is the compound which convert high molecular weight kininogen to bradykinin and we know excessive bradykinin is responsible for a condition known as hereditary angioneurotic edema so excessive bradykinin can cause hereditary angioneurotic edema. So what we have done, we have developed a drug which can inhibit calicrine. So if we inhibit calicrine, then bradykinin will not be produced. So we can treat hereditary angioneurotic edema. So this is a drug Lana Delumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against calicrine. It is a monoclonal antibody against calicrine. It is used in treatment of hereditary angioneurotic edema. Okay. Next drug is ticovirimat. Ticovirimat, again the name says it will be used for Vermin's virus. 
एंड विच वायरस इट इज अगेंस्ट स्मॉल पॉक्स स्मॉल पॉक्स सो इट इज बेसिकली अ मच्योरेशन इनहिबिटर द नेम से इज मैट मीन्स मच्योरेशन आई मीन्स इनहिबिटर सो इट इज अ मच्योरेशन इनहिबिटर ऑफ स्मॉल पॉक्स बट द क्वेश्चन इज स्मॉल पॉक्स हैज बीन इरेडिकेटेड we all know smallpox does not exist then why we have made this drug so this drug is basically made so that if there is any biological warfare like someone disposes the smallpox in the environment these are stored in the laboratories they are not uh, causing disease in humans because they are not found so if during the biological warfare if smallpox is inoculated or spread then we should have some drug so that drug is ticovirimab Okay, next drug is lasmi ditan. So this you all know, it is ending with the ditan. The drug which is ending with the ditan, they are five HT one F agonists. So by stimulating five HT one F receptors, they will decrease the release of CGRP. And when CGRP decreases, we can treat migraine. So these drugs they are used for acute attack of migraine. so this is a new drug for migraine acute attack of migraine and this can also be given orally so lasmiditan is a new oral drug for acute attack of migraine it is 5 ht1 f agonist next is voxilator now what is voxilator it will inhibit the hbs polymerization so basically what happens in a person with sickle cell anemia in a person with sickle cell anemia what happens if hbs polymerizes it cause obstruction so by inhibiting the polymerization of hbs it prevent the obstructive episodes so it is indicated in sickle cell anemia voxilator is indicated in sickle cell anemia okay next drug is again easy it is lamboraxan it is a brother of the drug called as suvorexan so we studied suvorexan so lamboraxan suvorexan the name end with orex ant so these are nothing but orexin receptor antagonist so lamboraxan is also orexin antagonist orexin receptor antagonist and these are indicated in insomnia they are used to induce sleep they are used in insomnia lamboraxan as well as suvorexan okay next is nitar sudil nitar sudil or any drug ending with sudil these are raho kinase inhibitors raho kinase inhibitor another drug was fasudil fasudil is also raho kinase inhibitor ending with sudil this was approved in angina whereas nitar sudil it is approved in treatment of glaucoma nitar sudil is approved in glaucoma in glaucoma it act by increasing the trabecular outflow nitar sudil it increases trabecular outflow increases trabecular outflow the major side effect of nitar sudil is cornea verticillata cornea verticillata is the major adverse effect of nitar sudil in the eye okay next is plecanotide plecanotide is brother of linaclotide linaclotide and pre uh, plecanotide these drugs both of them are guanolite cyclase c agonist they stimulate the enzyme guanolite cyclase c and that will increase cyclic gm and that will result in retention of water in the stools so they are indicated in chronic idiopathic constipation so these drugs are indicated in chronic idiopathic constipation they retain the fluid or water in the stools so that it is easy to pass them okay next is atelcalcitide atelcalcitide is a drug which is saying calcium so it is a drug which is calcimimetic drug 
इट इज अ कैल्सी माइमेटिक ड्रग अ ड्रग सिमिलर टू सीना कैल्सेट वी डिस्कस्ड इन आर लेक्चर्स अबाउट सीना कैल्सेट so the similar drug is atal calcitriate so what are these drugs they stimulate the calcium sensing the receptor what happens in the parathyroid gland this is a parathyroid gland parathyroid gland which contain parathyroid hormone we know parathyroid hormone the major stimulus for release is hypocalcemia so whenever hypocalcemia is there pth is released and that pth will remove calcium from the bone and give to blood so calcium level become non that means pth is not released when calcium is there so how calcium stop the release of pth on the parathyroid gland there are presence of calcium sensing receptors so normally whenever blood calcium is normal calcium stimulate this receptor and when this receptor is stimulated it inhibit the release of pth pth cannot be released so in some patients in hyperparathyroid patients calcium is not able to stimulate calcium sensing receptor so we have made the calcimimetic drugs so instead of calcium now the calcimimetic drug like sina calcet or atal calcitide they will stimulate the calcium sensing receptor and when calcium sensing receptor is stimulated pth will not be released so osteoclast will not be stimulated the bone resorption will not occur so these drugs they are indicated in osteoporosis due to hyperparathyroidism osteoporosis due to hyperparathyroidism can be treated by calcimimetic drugs okay next drug is amicizumab amicizumab again the name says it is a monoclonal antibody which will be used in circulation so amicizumab is indicated in hemophilia hemophilia so what happen is it is a bi specific antibody what do we mean by bi specific antibody is it will bind to two factors factor 9 and factor 10 it bind to both of them so by binding to both of them they change the alignment in such a manner that factor 10 gets activated you know hemophilia occur due to less activation of factor 10 so clotting does not occur that lead to bleeding so it will activate factor 10 and that will lead to clotting and that means it can treat hemophilia so it is a bi specific antibody bind to factor 9 factor 10 change their alteration factor 10 get activated that will treat hemophilia okay so these are the important points regarding the new drugs okay so what i want to say is don't let what you cannot do interfere with what you can do yes this happens very commonly we are not able to do one thing and we stop doing anything else okay so don't do that if you are not able to do something stop that start doing something else which you can do and when you strengthen other things then automatically you can do that thing also okay so that is the important message thank you very much